Hi, my name is Lucas de Lima, and I'm here to talk about the SHIFT theorem for the fraud model on finitely generated abelian groups. First of all, I'd like to thank the organization for the opportunity of talking about the subject. And, well, this was a joint work with Christian Coletti, and we have studied the process in groups. When we talk about groups, we're talking about Cayley graphs. We have studied the process on Cayley graphs of polynomial growth rate, and the shape theorem was obtained for the abelian case. We define a process placing one particle at each vertex of the graph. Only one of those particles is active and the others are inactive. So the active particle starts a simple random walk, activating the particles in the visited sites. Every active particle performs a simple random walk and we describe this activation process. The Fermi mm -hmm. model was first studied on ZD and we can also find other variations of the model such as the frog on trees or in the continuum or even much more generic structures. There is also a continuous time version of the frog model known as combustion process. But we restrict our attention to the study of the Cayley graphs. So here we denote by gamma the group and as the finite generating set. And the hypercube ZD is an example of Cayley graph. So we embed the graph with the simple metric. And when we have an upper bound of the growth of the walls, we say that the graph grows polynomially. And for Cayley graphs, we also have a lower bound in that case, and this D we call the polynomial growth rate. We study the case where the polynomial growth rate is greater or equal than three. So here we can find the definition of nilpotent groups and virtually nilpotent groups. This is important for us because groups of polynomial growth rate are actually characterized as virtually nilpotent groups. Here we can see the case where gamma is a billion, and in that case we know that gamma is isomorphic to ZD with a torsion subgroup. Now we can define the simple random walks starting at each vertex. The frog model will be defined in the product probability space. Here we associate the random variable for each random walk. The activation time is the random variable given by the infimum of this sum, and here our remark is that all those vertices, they don't have a special relation between them. They can be every collection of finite vertices. So this is not a first passive percolation model, this is, this is more generic. All right, so we will consider the Hausdorff distance between two sets in a metric space. We can consider that the Hausdorff distance gives us information about the dispersion between two sets. And it is very useful to describe the type of convergence we are interested in. So we now can define the Gromov house of convergence. We are interested in the point at Gromov house of convergence. And here a theorem from Pansu. Here we have a deterministic metric defined on the graph. This is a word metric. Now we can state the shape theorem for the frog model in a very similar way. Here we have a random metric which converges in a pointed group of house of sense to g infinity and here it is yeah, isomorphic to r n this d omega is given by our activation time if gamma was isomorphic to zd we could state it in a more simple way but the group of house of convergence is needed for our case so we extended several results from August Marshall and Popov, who studied the, the model on ZD. You can verify it in our manuscript. One of the most important results is this proposition, which shows that the process grows at least linearly. And here we consider not only the abelian case, but also the case where gamma is not abelian. We will define an ergodic group action of gamma on our probability space and we will associate this group action to a subadditive cycle.
So this subatypical cycle will be defined as our activation time. But first, uh, we recall that T of XY is the process which starts with one active particle at X. And T represents the time that the particle placed at Y is activated. So we know that T is subadditive. We verify that T is a subadditical cycle when we associate it to this group action, which is the translation of the random walks. So the action is ergodic because it preserves the probability measure. And when we apply it to our definition, our P is a product probability measure, so we have this infinite product which yields 0 or 1. So recall we are considering gamma as a virtual nilpotent group, then we denote by n its nilpotent subgroup, then we define gamma prime as the quotient of n by its Persian subgroup. This is used for the construction of our G infinity. We also will define a t prime, which is given by the maximum of the activation times throughout all the elements of the closed sets. And here we know that t prime is almost surely finite because t grows at least linearly. We also define group action of gamma prime. Uh, following the same uh, idea as before, we just fix an element on each closed set. And now we can also verify that this group action is ergodic. The idea is essentially the same as used before, just, just use the property of P being a product probability measure. And we also verify that T prime is also a subjective closed cycle. So this lemma gives us information about the growth of the process and the comparison between the elements of each co set given by the torsion sum group. We prove it using the subadditivity property of T and follows from the at least linear growth that we can apply Borel-Cantelli lemma to prove it. Recall that gamma is virtually nilpotent, so it has a nilpotent subgroup which is normal and it has a finite index. Therefore, we have a finite partition defined by n and its cosets. This lemma is similar to the previous one, but it gives us information that it suffices to verify the behavior of T on the nilpotent group. Now state a proposition of Austin and later improved by Cantorian and Furman, which is a subadditive ergodic theorem for finitely generated torsion-free nilpotent groups. So it can be applied for our gamma. Prime. C is a subadditive closed cycle, which is integrable. Then we can verify that this limit exists where phi define this tensor product of the abelianized group, which is defined this way. And phi is a quasi-norm, which is given by this equation. This is actually a consequence of Kinnaman's theorem, but for us, we can directly apply it to T prime. And now we can turn to the proof of the shape theorem. So we apply one of the previous lemmas to verify that T and T prime are asymptotically equivalent. Then we also need to make sure that gamma prime and T prime satisfy all the upper and lower bounds. We can also verify that gamma prime is isomorphic to the ZD, so we just need to verify that T prime and phi are asymptotically equivalent. And then we can conclude the proof of the theorem. Now some final remarks. Even if we choose gamma to be equal to ZD, we have shown that the choice of the generating set doesn't affect the shape result. And we only consider gamma to be abelian 
for the proof of the shape theorem, and the same reasoning could not be applied if gamma was not abelian. So, thank you for watching.